Chapter 31 Now Jacob heard that the sons of Laban were saying, Jacob has taken all that was our father's, and from what was our father's he has gained all this wealth. And Jacob saw that Laban did not regard him with favor as before. Then the Lord said to Jacob, Return to the land of your fathers and to your kindred, and I will be with you. So Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah into the field where his flock was, and said to them, I see that your father does not regard me with favor as he did before, but the God of my father has been with me. You know that I have served your father with all my strength, yet your father has cheated me and changed my wages ten times. But God did not permit him to harm me. If he said, The spotted shall be your wages, then all the flock bore spotted. And if he said, The striped shall be your wages, then all the flock bore striped. Thus God has taken away the livestock of your father and given them to me. In the breeding season of the flock I lifted up my eyes and saw in a dream that the goats that mated with the flock were striped, spotted, and mottled. Then the angel of God said to me in the dream, Jacob, and I said, Here I am. And he said, Lift up your eyes and see, all the goats that mate with the flock are striped, spotted, and mottled, for I have seen all that Laban is doing to you. I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed a pillar and made a vow to me. Now arise, go out from this land, and return to the land of your kindred. Then Rachel and Leah answered and said to him, Is there any portion or inheritance left to us in our father's house? Are we not regarded by him as foreigners? For he has sold us, and he has indeed devoured our money. All the wealth that God has taken away from our father belongs to us and to our children. Now then, whatever God has said to you, do. So Jacob arose and set his sons and his wives on camels. He drove away all his livestock, all his property that he had gained, the livestock in his possession that he had acquired in Paddan Aram, to go to the land of Canaan to his father Isaac. Laban had gone to shear his sheep, and Rachel stole her father's household gods. And Jacob tricked Laban the Aramean by not telling him that he intended to flee. He fled with all that he had and arose and crossed the Euphrates, and set his face toward the hill country of Gilead. When it was told Laban on the third day that Jacob had fled, he took his kinsmen with him and pursued him for seven days, and followed close after him into the hill country of Gilead. But God came to Laban the Aramean in a dream by night and said to him, Be careful not to say anything to Jacob, either good or bad. And Laban overtook Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent in the hill country, and Laban with his kinsmen pitched tents in the hill country of Gilead. And Laban said to Jacob, What have you done that you have tricked me and driven away my daughters like captives of the sword? Why did you flee secretly and trick me and did not tell me, so that I might have sent you away with mirth and songs, with tambourine and lyre? And why did you not permit me to kiss my sons and my daughters farewell? Now you have done foolishly. It is in my power to do you harm. But the God of your father spoke to me last night, saying, Be careful not to say anything to Jacob, either good or bad. And now you have gone away, because you longed greatly for your father's house. But why did you steal my gods? Jacob answered and said to Laban, Because I was afraid, for I thought that you would take your daughters from me by force. Anyone with whom you find your gods shall not live. In the presence of our kinsmen, point out what I have that is yours and take it. Now Jacob did not know that Rachel had stolen them. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. The one who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And the one who receives a righteous person because he is a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is a disciple, truly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. Welcome to Bible Time, Kids Devotion. Uh, Genesis chapter 31 and verse 1 through 32 today. Jacob has been uh, in Laban's household and working for him for, for now over 20 years. And he married both of his daughters, Leah and Rachel, and had many children. And because God blessed him, he had a great success and became very wealthy which his father-in-law, Laban, was not so happy about. Laban tried to deceive him and cheat his wealth. And what we find in verse 3 is that God meets Jacob and tells Jacob to leave that place and go to 
go back to father's country, which is the land of Canaan. So God promised them that God will be with them. So he took his both of his wife and children and all his belonging and headed to the father's land, the land of Canaan. After three days later, and the father-in-law finds out from his son that Jacob and his daughter left without saying goodbye. Of course, if Jacob would have told his father, he would not have let him go or, or made it difficult for him to leave. Even in physical violence, he would not allow him to go. So the only way he could go is that he leave without saying goodbye. So he did. And so father-in-law was furious and began to chase after them. And finally, about a week later, they were able to catch up to Jacob and his wife at Mount Gilead. And now, there was nothing wrong what Jacob did. He has every right to do what is best for his family. He does not need to get permission from his father-in-law. He's a grown man. And so what he did was nothing wrong with it, but Laban falsely anger towards Jacob and his daughter, his daughters. Uh, but Laban accused Jacob for stealing his gods, um, idols. And what is idol? Idols are like an image carved out to, to, to worship and it's supposed to give them a good luck and things like that so he wants his idols back and Jacob said I did not take any of those he had no knowledge that it was stolen by Rachel but uh, so he, he said we did not take this so they searched the tent and looked everywhere they could not find the idol we know that Rachel hid it under the seat the saddle of the camel and so they were not looking there for it. So they did not find that. Now, what I noticed about, and that's how it ends. Uh, what I noticed about this passage uh, is that Jacob still follow God's command. And he obeys the Lord. And, you know, going back to land of Canaan, you know that his brother is there and he's furious and his life could be in danger and yet he choose to follow what the Lord says. And also his wife agreed to obey and submit to God's will that, that they would go back and they, they follow Jacob in this new journey. Uh, we'll pick up more uh, tomorrow. And now Matthew chapter 10 Matthew chapter 10 is about Jesus sending out his 12 disciples to town to town to village to villages to proclaim the good news and heal the sick. And before he sends them out, he gives them instruction. And that's what Matthew chapter 10 is. We're picking up from verse 34. Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace to peace, but a sore. Wow. What Jesus is saying is that I'm not giving you this message so that everyone will be happy. There might be somebody who will be offended by the message that we give. The gospel message could be offensive to other people. They will be like, whoa, whoa, whoa I don't want that. People will be confrontational about the message that we have. You, you see... That's what happens when the disciple goes out and preach the good news. Some people will reject and some people will throw stone. I remember in Mexico when we were preaching the gospel to the villages, actually people brought stone and they started throwing rocks at us for sharing the word of God. Uh, it, it's like that. Uh, message of God is not neutral. It causes us to react, either to truly fall in love with God, or even it creates a hate towards God. And what I like in the passage that we read was this verse, verse 38. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. What Jesus is saying here is that, that unless you are willing to to love God more than your life. 
Jesus is not worth following. Jesus is not worth loving. Unless you love Jesus more than your life, you do not know Jesus. Jesus is more precious than your life or any other relationship. Unless you find Jesus that way, you do not have really known Jesus. When you know Jesus, you will cherish Him more than your life. And so if you will try, if you lose your life for the sake of His name, Jesus says you will find it. And so how about you? Do you love Jesus more than your life? If it's not worth more valuable than your life, then you don't know Jesus, who saw you and saw you more important than his own life. He picked up that cross and he nailed to the cross. And all because of he loves you. Do you love him the same way? That was my dog. Let us pray. God, thank you so much for this word. Pray that you would help us to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen.